Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it's o'clock and I'm Pearl of Wisdom. You're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. I've had a few letters here. Uh, I get letters all the time. Um, by the way, I'll be talking about the Detroit Red Wings right away. We're going to talk about the moves they've made over this year. What's Steve Eisenman doing there in the Detroit? Let's go look at that, shall we? We're going to do that. But uh, got letters from uh, Amarelda. Bathurst from Chicago, Illinois. And uh, she's asking, uh, how long do you think the Detroit Red Wings will take to rebuild? Uh, from Chicago, she, she's a Detroit fan or just interested in hockey? I don't know. That's a great question, my friend. Uh, I'll, I'll t I don't know exactly, but we're going to take a look at it. And everybody in the land is going to tell us what we think in the comment section. And it's going to be good times. Um, also, we have a, a, um, Jerome Purston. Purston? I hope that's how I said it. P-U-R-S-T-I-N. Purston? Sounds like it's probably right. From uh, Albuquerque, New York. Writing... Um, do you think Detroit's going to do any moves this more moves this summer? Uh, and I say, uh, well, well let's, let's look into that. Got all the letters. By the way, send all the letters. We go down in the mailroom. Uh, Guido goes down to the mailroom, comes up, and takes the letter sack, pours it all over the letter table, and we all do the Perlo dance. And one day I'll do the Perlo dance for you when you can see me, uh, which I'll be able to do if I ever figure out how to get my face up here while I'm doing this. And I don't know how to do that. I don't know anything about this, uh, this uh, technology stuff. But guess what, John from... Uh, off the wall hockey we did a video yesterday over on his channel you might want to check it out we talked about tampa bay and what they're going to do and their trades and free agents and all that stuff that they have that mess they got going over there and it was fun go check it out but he said he's going to kind of help me out as we go here so that'll be fun but uh okay we're going to look at detroit uh thanks for your letters and i'm sending you a my nhl pearls of wisdom Necklace, all of you, in the Perlocopter. Hernandez and Melissa are busy out there in the Perlocopter sending everybody their Pearls of Wisdom necklaces. So you will be getting one any day now. Have a great day. Okay, let's get to Detroit, shall we? We're going to move this. We're going to look at the Detroit Red Wings. So what has he done so far, Mr. Eisman? By the way, Mr. Eisman is my uh, forever man crush. I used to have him up on my wall. And no, I'm not gay. But if I was, that's fine too, right? Of course. But he's just a man crush. I just loved him as a player and as a general manager. And he's one of the most intelligent minds that ever played the game. And I just think he's amazing. I love Stevie Y. So what is Stevie Y doing with the Detroit Red Wings here? Okay, let's look at what he's got going on here. Now, for, we got... Dylan Larkin, one of the finest in the land, signed up for a killer 6.1. Going to be three years before he has to be re-upped again. Franz Nielsen soon will be off the books, fortunately, because he's barely an NHLer right now. Darren Helm's off the books. He went and uh, he's not here. There's a guy who's not here because he, uh, he, he, got, he got rid of that abdicator contract. Well, he bought it out. And which was good because poor Ab Abdicator uh, could not keep up in the NHL anymore and it was not nice. Phil Pula off the books after next year. Fabry, nice pickup of Ladislav Nemesnikov. You see what he's doing here? Two years, two million. Nemesnikov is an average player at best. He's he's good offensive player, but he's not very good defensively. But he certainly can provide a role on a team that is very much rebuilding and what Eisenman is doing with this rebuilding team is he's getting it if you look over here let's look at 2021-22 look at all these UFAs Philpula, Helm, Glenn Denning probably on his way out uh, Bobby Ryan could be re-signed again if you know and and we got to talk about that Bobby Ryan what a great move there has been talk 
that there's been a little bit of partying going on in the Detroit organization. Uh, one of the guys that's not on here right now because I believe he's a free agent was Brandon Perlini has been known to like to tip him back. And I'm not saying they got a problem, but you bring in a guy like Bobby Ryan who did struggle with uh, substance abuse and he comes out and, he, and he, he has the courage to say, you know what, I got a problem, I'm going to go fix her up and come back to a young team like this that's the kind of character you want, right? That kind of character is awesome to have in a rebuilding room where you're going to have a lot of young players like Adam Erne. Philip Zadina still, um, I think, is going to show up a little more this year. Um, then they bring in Sam Gagne. Now, Sam Gagne, he, he re-upped re Sam Gagne for one year. Sam Gagne can play anywhere on your roster. Uh, pretty vanilla guy, but he's been through an awful lot himself. He's got, there's a guy, this is a guy who has a lot of character and can help young kids say, hey, don't do this. Sam Gagne was supposed to be a lot better than he was. He went through some issues, and I don't know exactly what they were, but he, he came out the other side and he's doing all right. And Bobby Ryan too. So you got two guys that can, can kind of guide these kids and help them become the best that they can be. And I, I really love those signings. Now he has to sign Tyler Bertuzzi, Anthony Manta. We usually have to do this first, right? Let's look, cap space, $18 million. So should have no problem signing them up. The interesting thing that's going to be, we're going to see here is whether he tries to do a bridge deal with Anthony Manta and Tyler Bertuzzi or sign them for a long time. At 25 years old, we'll look at Bertuzzi's numbers here. He's been a pretty darn good player in the land. 48 points last year, 47 the year before that. He probably has an upside, 21 goals, playing on a team that isn't spectacular, um, to say the least. Not bad production. If I'm betting here, I'm betting Stevie Y is going to say, Tyler, here's five and a half for eternity or something of that nature try to average maybe even six for like eight years because five years from now almost for sure Bertuzzi's number at six is going to look pretty darn good so and as far as Anthony Manta little different Anthony Manta has been kind of up and down it's taken him a while but last year he started looking like the player that they always projected him to be um, and in the shortened seasons, he almost had a point a game. Not bad production before this as well. Just as an overall player, though, it looks like Matt that could be a 30 goal score, 70 to 80 point player. If we could sign him up for seven million for a long term on this contract, that would be fantastic. And I just have a feeling that, that, that that's exactly what Stevie Y is going to try to do with these these two guys. Sign him up long term. Uh, and that would be fantastic for their future cap. You see more of what he brings in. He, there's a good one. Mark Stahl. Brought in Mark Stahl. Got a draft pick, a second round pick to take Mark Stahl with this, this 5.7 million. Tons of cap space left over. Two things here. First of all, he gets a second round pick to get Mark Stahl off the book for the New York Rangers. He gets a second round pick for it. That's fantastic. Mark Stahl probably is barely an NHL player right now, but if you want a guy that's going to teach guys like Philip Peronic and down down when we go to the, some prospects, Chalowski, these guys to be warriors, because Mark Stahl was a warrior on the ice, block shots like crazy. He 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 brought every inch of what he could bring to the ice every single game. Mark Stahl was never the greatest skill guy, but what he could do, he did to the best of his ability. And he gave up his body and he fought and never gave up. Mark Stahl was great, to, and that's great to teach guys like this. Uh, again, you see, look at all the guys coming off the books next year, um, if they want. They could re-up Biega, they can re-up John Merrill, he's not making much. He is keeping his salary low as he builds his young players, picks and chooses what he wants for his core, 
and does something like Joe Sackick did in Colorado and keeps cap space while building a strong team. Like usual, he's doing brilliant stuff. Goes and gets Thomas Grace to help Jonathan Bernier. Oh, thank God for that. Bernier must be taking a breather, a uh, breath of fresh air because Bernier did everything for them last year. His numbers didn't look the greatest, but man, he had days where he was stopping everything. And now he has a little better backup than Howard. Howard had a terrible year last year. Grice can bring, give him a little more of a breather so he doesn't have to play everything all the time especially in a condensed season, that's going to help a lot. Um, I have a feeling they're going to sign, he, that Stevie Y is going to sign Bernier up for a couple more years too, so we'll see about that. But really what I wanted to show here is how awesome Stevie Eisenman has turned this roster into a roster that has flexibility. Um, before with, uh, with uh, Oh, uh, Holland, sorry, I almost forgot his name, who went to Edmonton, who I like. He kind of messed it up, though, a little. I, I understand what he was doing. He gave guys like Darren Helm and Nielsen and guys like this huge, con pretty big contracts because he put value on character while building up the kids. And maybe Stevie Eisman wouldn't have done much different than that, but most of those kids were in contact with these kind of players already. And now they're becoming leaders, so he has now made it. So this con, this uh, they have flexibility in their salary structure now. So going forward, they're going to be able to actually build a team and not get stuck with players that they don't really need or want anymore on long-term contracts. Fantastic. So let's go down into some people that may fill some holes this year. One of the questions we had was, how long is it going to take for this rebuild? And uh, my answer is, for knowing Stevie Wiseman, as long as it takes. He's, a, he's very patient. I don't think he puts a time or number on when this team is going to be what it's going to be. He's going to let it grow and play it by ear. Now, play, play it by ear, not necessarily. I mean, he probably has a general time he would like. He probably doesn't want it to be more than three years say but he's not going to go out and tell anybody anything he's just going to let us see how these young players do and go from there so as far as forwards are concerned they're a little light uh joseph Bellino, can he play next year it's possible but he had some pretty light numbers in the ahl i have a feeling they'll give him one more year especially stevie eisenman He's going to give his young players every opportunity to become the best that they can be in the AHL. Michael Rasmussen, a big six foot six center, still learning the offensive part of the game. Hopefully they can get a little more offense out of him for one more year and bring him up. Joseph Valino may take two more years and that's okay. Um, uh, Taro Hiros, Hirose, um, has been a little bit of a disappointment. He's kind of a perimeter player. He's learning to play kind of in the paint. But I think he's going to get a lot more of a chance this year. Uh, maybe close to his last chance. He's a restricted free agent again. And he's really got to start putting up some numbers this year in the NHL going forward, I believe. As far as defense is concerned, a couple of guys that might play up in this lineup before we go to the depth chart. Maurice Sider. I think Maurice Sider uh, may play as soon as this year. He's not going to be an overly offensive guy, but he is very solid. Six foot three, 191, plays in his own zone very well. He's big enough to play in the league. Um, in Germany, he put up six points in seven games at the World Junior Under 20. He, there's some offense there. You may see a 30-point guy, but the big thing is, is you're going to see a big, solid player with a big reach that knows how to play the defensive side of the game and get the puck out well. He's very patient with the puck. Um, I love, they, lo they loved him, and I can understand why. He looks really good. Uh, Dennis Chalowski has, took a step back, and I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with Chalowski going forward. Really having a difficult time building in the defensive end of the game. Um, right now, it looks like he's projecting to be a 5'6". 
He played more, a lot in the AHL last year. We'll see how much of a um, improvement he makes this year. I'd like to see him playing for Detroit this year. So with that in mind, then you got a couple guys like Joe Hickix, Dylan McArath, who are probably not going to make it uh, at all. Or, I mean, for McElrath, he's 28 years old. It's about time it's over for him. For Hicketts, he's young. He's a smart player. He may be one of those guys that play when he's 26, 27. He's very small, and he's building strength and experience to become possibly a 5, 6 guy. A small one at that, though. Um, so let's go to their depth chart um, and see what it's going to look like this year and maybe get an idea where they're going in the future. Tyler Bertuzzi, Larkin, and Manta they have as a first line. By, this way, by the way, this is cap friendly. Cap friendly, it's the best there. I said it. And thank you for all your subscriptions and all of those sort of things that you guys do. It really helps the, um, the, the channel and it helps my ego. And that's important too, right? Yes. Bertuzzi, Larkin, and Ma Anthony Manta. Um, this is okay as a number one line. It could be even more okay. I like Tyler Bertuzzi a lot better than a lot of players. I think he has an upside to be a 60, 70 point guy. However, I think he's more likely going to be your second liner. Um, we didn't even talk about, okay, we'll get into it. Um, Fabry, Philpila, Nemeshnikov. They, did I, I told, we talked about Nemeshnikov. I have a feeling there's a guy missing here. I have a feeling that Zadina is going to play here. And I have a feeling Zadina is going to play right here. I think he's going to do um, have, a, have a bigger year this year, more uh, come in bigger, stronger. And I like his game. And there's a reason why he was a uh, first-round pick. Pick before Quinn Hughes, by the way. In fact... They were going to pick Quinn Hughes until Zadina fell to them, and then they chose Zadina. So there's a lot of pressure on him. But I think that he will be playing here. And you'll see Nemeshnikov play further down here, um, possibly in the middle between Bobby Ryan and Helm, because it's po I think it's possible that Luke Lundenning or Franz Nielsen gets moved in the offseason so they can make room for guys like Zadinov. Uh, Z or Zadina, I should say. What am I talking about? Um, but as far as the second line, this is pretty weak. Valtteri Filpula is 36 years old. So if we're looking for the future of Detroit, we put Zadina here. And, of course, we have, uh, let's not forget, Lucas Raymond, who probably won't be available for another year at least extremely intelligent player, but he's going to be playing on your right wing or left wing soon too. And that will start making this team look like not a playoff team. And that'll probably be next year, but a much improved team. Uh, Michael Rasmussen, we talked about him. Valino playing in your bottom six. I think they're both going to be bottom six players. Honestly, I do. Um, would strengthen, remove, uh, take Franz Nielsen out of there put Rasmussen in there and Valino, and you're still pretty young, but getting to that point. So getting to a point where you're seeing a team formed, and that's what I really think that Detroit is at right now. So if you're asking me when they're going to be competitive again, it's not going to be likely next year. It probably won't be the year after that because they're all still going to be very young. Maybe the third year. And the reason why I say that is because that will be the year that you have enough youth and speed that you may start going with, um, that you may start looking at uh, adding to more veteran presence to that team. Third year, possibly, is when they'll start actually coming around and bringing, um, being a playoff team. Maybe four to five, but that would be the earliest, I would say. So thank you for your question. And do I think they're going to make many more moves this year? That was the other question. I think Stevie Eisenman will make some moves, and the moves that I think he'll likely make will be um, to pick up players like he did with Stahl. There's going to be a lot of players out there, a lot of teams out there looking to get rid of contracts. We all know with the... Uh, we all know with the salary cap situation, 
He's probably going to try to pick up a couple more players with one, maybe two years left on their contract and get more draft picks and keep building them up. And that's something I didn't mention. He had a lot of draft picks this year. A lot of those players that we that he picked this year could fill up this roster really quick. I think three years is a fair assessment to what will happen with this team and how good they will be. We're talking with Stevie Eisenman and a great staff there that knows how to draft and knows how to develop people. Um, but that's what I think they're going to add. If, you, if we're thinking they're going to add for improvement to be better this year, I think not. I think they'll just be, this is basically the team we're going to see, add maybe a veteran to that they get draft picks for. That's my full 42% boys and girls. That's all I have to give. And thank you again for subscribing and enjoying this fine channel. We'll be doing other ones. We're going to be doing the Calgary Flames soon, probably with uh, Mr. Uh, John from Off the Wall Hockey. Joe Boric's going to be helping me out. You guys all know Joe Boric. And also on Friday, we're going to be doing the Boston Bruins with none other than Anthony Chardelli. Deli. Fantastic writer. Fantastic hockey mind. It's going to be awesome. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.